Hello everybody and welcome back to another anatomy tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at the anatomy of the knee, specifically looking at the MRI anatomy in the coronal, sagittal and axial planes. I'm going to show you how to identify some really clinically important structures and then head through each scan in a real systematic way, looking at the bones, the ligaments, the menisci, the articular cartilages, some of the muscles that cross the knee joint, identify some of the fat pads surrounding the knee joint, as well as assessing the extensive mechanism of the knee. So let's start by having a look at this coronal image here. This is a coronal PD of the knee. And the first thing we need to do is figure out which part of this image is medial and which is lateral. The first clue that this is potentially medial is this thick band, this homogeneous band that comes all the way down here, low signal band, coming in close contact with the meniscus here. And this is the classic appearance of our medial collateral ligament. Then if we scroll slightly posterior in the image, we can see almost the profile of a face here. You can see the neck coming up to the chin, the nose, the forehead there. This is a classic appearance of the lateral posterior portion of our lateral femoral condyle. Again, another clue that this is potentially lateral. And then of course, if we see our fibula coming into the image, we know our fibula lies laterally and we can say confidently that this is our lateral portion of the image. So let's have a look at our femur coming in at the slight angle here. We can see our medial condyle of the femur and our lateral condyle here. And then that articulates with the tibia. We can see our medial tibial plateau, our lateral tibial plateau, and then we can see our two tibial spines, our medial tibial and lateral tibial spines there. Again, we can go back and see the fibula here. We can see the styloid process of the fibula, the head, the neck, and then follow that right down into the lower leg. So let's identify some of the ligaments that surround the knee. We've already looked at this medial collateral ligament, just a single ligament coming along that side. Our lateral ligaments are a little bit more complex. There are actually four structures that make up our lateral collateral ligament complex. We can head slightly anteriorly. We can see our IT, our iliotibial band coming and attaching to this tibia here. As we head out posteriorly, we can look at our fibula head and see a structure coming off the fibula head up into our biceps femoris muscle. This is our biceps femoris tendon coming all the way down, attaching to the head of the fibula. As we look at the head of the fibula, we see another structure coming up here and attaching to that face that we saw earlier. Now from this like nasal bridge area, if we follow it down, we can see this ligament coming and attaching to the fibula head. This is what's known as our fibula collateral ligament. And the last structure that makes up the lateral collateral ligament complex it's quite difficult to see on these coronal planes, and I'll show you them more uh, closely on our axial planes, but it's our popliteus tendon that's going to come around here, coming down, you can see it here, and into our popliteus muscle here. So we've got four structures on that side, the popliteus tendon, our fibular collateral ligament, our IT band, as well as our biceps femoris tendon coming all the way down. Those are our four ligaments there, our four main ligaments there. Let's head now into the joint itself. We can see a ligament coming from here. We're anterior on the tibia. As we head down posteriorly, we see that ligament heading all the way backwards, attaching to this medial surface of our lateral femoral condyle. This is our anterior cruciate ligament. Following it all the way there, we can see there's some heterogeneous signal within this ligament, which is normal. And we can see slightly here that there's almost two bands coming here. We have an anterior medial band and a posterior lateral band of our ACL ligament. So we need to follow this ligament all the way down from its attachment at the tibia all the way up to its attachment at the femur. Here we can see, if we go anteriorly, we can see this is our PCL, our posterior cruciate ligament. And it's called posterior because it attaches to the posterior segment of our tibia. So let's follow that ligament all the way back, 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 back. We can see it attaching here to the posterior tibia. And we're going to see this in both our sagittal and our axial planes as well. Perfect. Let's move on to the menisci. Now, sometimes it's easier to look in our fat sat images because we get a better, a better detail of our menisci here. We can see the meniscus is this triangle shape. We have our base of our meniscus here, which is not an articular surface. And then we have these two articular surfaces here of our menisci. You can see a nice sharp angle here. Now, when we're looking for tears, by definition, there needs to be disruption of the articular surface of a meniscus. So you can see how there's a white line within this meniscus. That's not a tear. It doesn't actually reach down to our articular surface. Now, both menisci are bound to the tibia by an anterior and a posterior root. 
Then they head off into the horns of the menisci, the body of the meniscus, another horn anteriorly, and then back onto its roots. And I'm going to show you how to identify those structures now. So let's start anteriorly on this medial meniscus. We can see here the attachment to the tibia is our anterior root of our medial meniscus. Let's follow that round. This is our anterior horn of the medial meniscus coming into our body. The body heads all the way back before curving round into our posterior horn of the medial meniscus and then attaching at the posterior root here. Again, we're going to look at these as well in the sagittal plane. Let's look at our lateral meniscus. I'm going to start anteriorly. We can see our anterior root coming into our anterior horn here, going back into the body of the lateral meniscus, round to the posterior horn of the lateral meniscus, and attaching more medially here as our posterior root of that lateral meniscus. While we're here, we can have a look at the articular cartilage here. Start by scrolling through this medial articular cartilage of the femoral condyle. And we want to make sure that the cartilage is not disrupted. There's no bits of cartilage that have broken off. We can also look within the joint space to see there aren't any interarticular bodies there that are maybe signs of bits of bone or bits of cartilage that have broken off. And we want to do this on both sides. We want to see this cartilage ma maintaining its thickness, being nice and smooth. We can see that this cartilage has got a black line underneath it. It's a bit clearer on our coronals here. We don't call this black line cortex as we would do further up. This is our subchondral bone plate here. So we want to make sure, again, on the tibial plateaus that we maintain the integrity of our cartilage. We look at that on both sides there. Perfect. So we've identified the bones, we've looked at some of the ligaments, we've gone through our menisci as well as looking at the cartilage. Let's move on to our sagittal image. Again, the first thing we need to do before we label anything is figure out where is medial and where is lateral. So the first thing we can do is have a look at the shape of the tibial plateau here. And if we've got this convex shape here, it looks like a golf tee side on. Our golf ball would be sitting on top here. That's a classic shape of our medial tibial plateau. And again, if we were to scroll through that medial plateau, we wouldn't see any fibula there. As we head out laterally, we can see that we have a convex superior pole of our lateral uh, tibial plateau. And obviously we'll see our fibula here, which is indicative that we are lateral. So we'll scroll through those bones. We, must, we can also have a look at the patella bone here as we can scroll through. Now, sometimes a patella is divided into two portions, a bipartite patella, or sometimes even more, a multipartite patella. And those are both normal anatomical variants. You mustn't be tricked by that and call that a patella fracture. We can look at our extensor mechanism here. We've got our quadriceps tendon coming down to our patella, and we can follow that patella tendon then all the way down to our tibial tuberosity on the anterior surface of our tibia here. We want to make sure that this has got low signal all the way through, nice thick bands, and there's no disruption of that extensor mechanism. Let's have a look at some of our ligaments. Now it's quite difficult to identify our collateral ligaments because we don't always catch them in plane. But let's come out laterally. We can see that our biceps femoris tendon, we actually catch that in the plane here, as well as our fibula collateral ligament coming down there. So that's not always seen, but you can see it here. Obviously our IT band is too thin, we haven't caught that. And it's quite difficult to see our popliteus tendon, but we can see it coming around posteriorly here. And as we head down, we can see our popliteus muscle back there. Then let's look at our cruciate ligaments. It's a great way to assess them here in the sagittal plane. We want to come to our intercondylar region here and we can see our ACL coming. It's a nice steep angle. This ACL's gradient must be much steeper than this gradient here, our intercondylar gra gradient or our Blumenstadt's line. So we can draw a line across here. That gradient should be much less than our steep ACL coming through here. We want to scroll through that ACL, make sure we follow it all the way. It's attaching to both the tibia and the femur. Again, we've got this heterogeneous signal here. We can look at our PCL attaching posteriorly to the tibia. It's a much thicker band, low signal all the way through, hooking around like this and attaching to our femur on that side. We also want to scroll through it, make sure we've got attachments on both sides. And our PCL prevents our femur from tracking forward. And if you think about how often when we're jumping or landing that we're actually in a bit of a flex position here, you can see why the PCL needs to be much stronger than that ACL because our femur is always having pressure forward like that. Whenever we've got a bent knee and we're weight bearing, our femur wants to slip forward and we need a strong ligament to prevent that femur from slipping forward. 
Let's have a look at our menisci. I'm going to start here at our anterior root of our medial meniscus. I want to follow that all the way around we, in our anterior horn now. As we carry on following that round, we should see our body of our medial meniscus and then heading into our posterior horn of our medial meniscus, following it round to our posterior root just before our PCL here. Then we can see our PCL come into view and what we can also see is our ACL coming down. Now our ACL comes in real close proximity to our anterior root of the lateral meniscus. So we can see here our anterior root of the lateral meniscus coming round into our anterior horn. Again, the whole way through we need to assess are these articular surfaces intact? Is there any disruption with that? Uh, but here there's none, these menisci are normal. We're into our body of our lateral meniscus and again then we can follow our posterior meniscus all the way back down our posterior horn of our lateral meniscus and our posterior root coming down and attaching to the tibia here. Just a word of caution, when you're in your posterior root of your lateral meniscus, we can see our popliteus tendon coming up here. And sometimes there's a little bit of white here, high signal, which is actually our popliteus recess. And that's not a disruption of our meniscus, that's just a space between the popliteus tendon and our lateral meniscus, our posterior horn of our lateral meniscus. We can also see here the fat pads. We've got our infrapatellar fat pad here, otherwise known as our Hoffer's fat pad. And then above the patella, our suprapatellar fat pads. You can see we've got an anterior suprapatellar fat pad and a posterior suprapatellar fat pad. This is also known as a prefemoral fat pad. And what we can get is fluid actually tracking up when we have a joint effusion. Fluid can track up and separate those two fat pads. And you can often see that on an x-ray. You'll definitely see it on an MRI, especially if you've done a sagittal PD here, a fat sat. You can see fluid is bright, fat is now dark. You can see our fat is now dark. You can get fluid tracking up and separating that anterior and posterior uh, suprapatellar fat pad. Okay, let's head on to our axial slices. Again, we need to find out where's medial, where's lateral. The first clue here is our patella facet here has a longer portion. This is our lateral patella facet. And the shorter portion here is our medial patella facet. You can see there's actually another little facet here that's known as the odds facet and doesn't actually articulate with anything, but we will see that in many patients. We can see our patella retinaculum, medial and lateral here, preventing the patella from dislocating laterally. So now we can see we're at the level of the femur, there's one single bone. Another clue that this is medial is we'll get to know these muscles here. They lie medially. We know this muscle here, this is our biceps femoris. We can follow that down. We should see the biceps tendon, biceps femoris tendon forming and attaching to our fibula here, which we see. As we come up, we'll see a small ligament here, our fibula collateral that we covered earlier. It's nice and rounded like that and sits slightly anterior to that biceps femoris tendon. And we can follow that all the way up, attaching to the femur here. We can also follow our popliteus tendon coming down and back around to our popliteus muscle, which lies anterior to our popliteal artery. This is our gastrocnemius here, and we can see that there's a medial and a lateral head. Now the medial head of the gastrocnemius has this large tendon here, and this is our semimembranosus tendon that attaches here posteriorly. We can follow that semimembranosus there all the way down attaching. As we follow it up, we can see there's our semimembranosus, and then we have three muscles here, S, G, T, I think a bit of sergeant. We've got our sartorius, our gracilis, and then our semitendinosus. So we can see our semimembranosus coming down and attaching there. We can see our gastrocnemius. Let's have a look at our collateral ligaments. So we start up in the femur. We should see medial surface here is our medial collateral ligament. We can follow that down. It sits very close to the meniscus here and then heads down into the tibia and attaches down posteriorly. We've looked at our biceps femoris tendon, we've looked at our fibula collateral ligament, as well as our popliteus tendon. The last structure we need to find here is our IT band, which then also goes down and attaches, as we head down, attaches to the tibia here. We can see this thin IT band up here. Let's look at our cruciate ligaments. We can see our ACL heading anteriorly, fans out there before attaching to the anterior surface of the tibia. And then we can follow our PCL coming from the posterior surface of the tibia, all the way up, following and following and attaching to the lateral surface of this medial femoral condyle there. If we can follow that um, tendon all the way down, make sure it maintains its integrity 
like that. And then looking at the ACL coming across and fanning out. Can't really see the two bundles here, but we want to follow it all the way down. Let's talk about these three muscles here. So we've got our semitendinosus, our gracilis, and our sartorius. They run around and uh, attach at our pes and serinus. We actually don't get all the way down here, but this is an important area. We can get a fluid accumulation there. And then another really important area, I was showing you the semimembranosus here, right adjacent to this medial head of the gastrocnemius. If we get fluid building up, separating those two from each other, this is what's known as a Baker's cyst, which I'm sure you've heard of before. As you can see here, we've, we've just managed to cut the uh, lateral meniscus in plane, which is not always the case, but you can see how the lateral meniscus is this tight C shape. And it's difficult to see here, but we have our posterior root, our posterior horn, our body, anterior horn coming to our anterior root, and our mini medial meniscus is much broader, much wider, and the roots are not as close to each other. So we've got our posterior root, posterior horn, into our body, coming round to our anterior horn and our anterior root at the front there. It's not too easy to see, but you can see the shape difference of our lateral and medial menisci. Lastly, we can just have a look at our quadriceps tendon as it's coming down. You can see our patella there. Now you might see that there's no cartilage here, and there is on the patella, and that's because if we look at our sagittals here, the cartilage on the patella comes much before the cartilage on the femur, and so that's normal. We mustn't be scared that we're now missing chunks of cartilage on this side. We should follow it down, the cartilage then oppose. We should see them nice and thick, maintaining their thickness, no chunks of cartilage missed. Head further down, further down, we can then see our patella tendon heading down towards our anterior tibia there. So we follow that up, make sure we've got low signal tendon all the way up to our patella. We've got a whole patella there and into our quadriceps tendon. So that's it. We've covered the basic structures of the knee on MRI. I hope you've managed to follow along. It can be a bit confusing, but as always, I'm linking the case below. Go and have a look for yourself. Scroll through the images, try and label as many things as you can. And when you're looking at these scans in real life, in actual clinical practice, make sure you're questioning, is this normal? Every time, don't just go through the motions of identifying the structure. Ask yourself, does this look normal? And if not, then try and figure out what's going wrong. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know what other anatomy videos you want to hear about next, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye, everybody.